What is going on guys? Welcome back to the M50 B30 engine build part 2. Today we have to pull the engine out of the E36. I've done this many times so I've got it down to a fine art uh, but we need the engine out of this so that we can take the head off and put it onto our M50 B30. We also need the sump out of this because it's got the oil drain welded onto it. So we need to put that sump onto this engine as well. And that'll complete this engine. We need to put the clutch on, everything like that, the gearbox, and then put it back in the hole where we can put everything back onto it. So massive mission. And uh, we're gonna get started right now. Wish me luck, pray for me, let's do this. <laughs> I like to take the whole front of the car off uh, to make this process really easy and that itself is actually really easy I think it's like eight bolts or something to take the whole front of the car off uh, which is rad now I'll go ahead and drain the oils and stuff so we can start undoing the engine mounts and everything and uh, take the exhaust off and lift the engine out <laughs> engines out <sighs> just like that all right straight away I'm just gonna whip the sump off really quickly because uh, that's not very hard to do and then I'm gonna sit the engine down pull the gearbox off and start stripping everything down <laughs> So, all on the ground, sitting on the tyre, already removed the power steering pump down here. Um, so we're going to go ahead, pull the gearbox off, see how far we get in ripping everything off today. I'd love to pull the head off, I really am keen to kind of see, obviously, the condition of the head, fingers crossed we can use this one. But, we need to get the head off, inspect it, see where it was leaking, get the head checked over, make sure it's all good, and if so, we're going to bolt it straight onto the 3 litre, and uh, we're good. So... <laughs> Time to remove this super gangster turbo manifold. Shout out Damon. Dude's a wizard. Alrighty, I removed the coils. I didn't film it, but coils are gone. Uh, so now I'm going to remove the valve cover. And then we can start taking the vanus apart. And then we can pull the head off. Which I am really keen to do. So, uh... Pro tip, always have some water with you, which I do not right now, uh, while you're working on cars. Otherwise, you get dehydrated and then you get cranky. Or at least that's what happens with me anyway. So I'm going to go inside, grab a cup of water, and then we're going to get this head off the motor. <laughs> Check out that crustiness. That is, by the looks of things, burnt oil or something that's come to the top and just gotten real crispy time to get the head off
nice one. We got the head off. And uh, the results are pretty interesting. So the gasket itself is just super, super old. Yeah, obviously this is the complete stock gasket. Which, um, you know, has done its job, I guess. It's, uh, it's literally stuck to the block. Cannot pull it off. And yeah, there's plenty of evidence that uh, there's been seepage into the water galleries. Also, um, you can see on boost, I guess, when it's lifting the head, combustion is crossing over between the cylinders as well, some of the cylinders. But it's really on the head side that you can kind of tell that uh, combustion has been getting into the water galleries because you can see where it's nice and silver, it's been sealing. And then obviously where it's not, that's where it's been seeping through. So you can see it across cylinder two, cylinder three, a lot of them really, especially on this side of the head. So that's pretty interesting, but you can definitely tell that yeah, the head has been slightly lifting. Um, but in terms of the actual threads in the block, look all right, but these bolts do stretch and that's probably what's lifted the head. And once the gasket was compromised, yeah, it's a good thing we pulled this engine out and decided to give up on it. And now we have to go ahead and clean up the head because we're going to put it on this block and put everything together. So, yeah, still need to take the engine arms and everything off this because they're going onto that block. But we're making some really, really good progress. That is the world's loudest bird. I swear on my life. Cool. So it's another day. Uh, I decided to take a little bit of time, clean up the garage, completely strip down the old engine um, that was sitting on the ground and taking up a lot of space in here. And that is now over there, literally... Uh, in pieces, just a long block now, I've got everything off it, got the alternator, power steering pump and all that stuff, uh, but now it's time to start assembling our engine properly, so chucking the oil pump on, it's just sitting there at the moment, uh, and just going from there, we've got to put all the front timing cover stuff on, and then we'll flip it over and we can put the head on the engine, which uh, I'm super excited about, we have ARP studs uh, right here, which is awesome. Uh, M50 2.5 litre ARP head studs. I've never had ARPs before so I'm very excited to put these in. Got a new head gasket going on. Um, yeah, everything's going to come together today. Hopefully the build is literally finished today. Oh, that's the aim anyway. Let's get into it. Alright, so we have the timing chain guides on here with the timing chain as well. Obviously we've got the oil pump back on, now we're going to flip, flip it over and we're going to put our front timing cover uh, back onto the engine. Yeah. timing cover is all nicely on obviously I gave it a quick clean up before uh, putting it on but looking great we're gonna carry on um, also just gonna cable tie the timing chain uh, to this guide for now just so that we don't lose the timing chain down the timing cover when we flip the engine over how good does this look holy Mike's building an engine and it actually looks tidy what a freaking surprise by the way the Bathurst is on Bathurst 1000 race so good. Literally living the dream today. Beautiful day here in Melbourne. Got the Bathurst playing. Building a three litre stroker engine. What more could you ask for? Alright, we have our fresh head gasket here. It's going on. Straight on, no adhesives or anything like that, onto the dowels, just a stock Victor Rains head gasket. So I had the head checked out by a uh, machine shop and they said that it's within spec, it's good to go, no warpage, no nothing. I didn't get it machined because I didn't have to, also we don't have enough time, the head's good to go so we're going to chuck that straight on and we're going to bolt that down with the ARP head studs as per the instructions that come with the bolts. I'm excited. Alright, so we have our RP studs here. 
They have a little hex on the top of them. You can't really see it, but uh, trust me, they do. The Allen key that goes inside the ooh, the stud, and you obviously just screw it into the uh, block through the head. You don't apply torque to these, it's literally just to get it down into the block. Before you do it, of course, you got to chuck the grease on that they supply for it on the top thread so that it's nice and lubricated. So when you put the nut on, there's nothing holding it back from torquing it down. So, just a bit of grease on, and we just slip it down into its hole, and then we screw it in. them down in the first sequence 1 through to 14 to 25 foot pounds of torque then 50 foot pounds of torque then lastly 75 foot pounds and there's a talking sequence here so pretty rad everything you need on one piece of paper so you don't have to go and google and do all this research Yeah, all done. How good. All right, we're gonna carry on putting the engine together. Gonna to chuck the oil filter housing on, water pump in, all of that jazz, and uh, keep going. So we have our Vanos timing blocks here. <laughs> they don't actually have Vanos timing blocks. Obviously, these are just G clamps but they hold the cams straight. So see how this is nice and straight, nice and straight. That means that the cams are timed uh, to top dead center and you can see there's two dots here as well. One, two, two dots here means it's the, the right way. And then we have the crank at top dead center as well. So there's a line here and a line here and they're lined up it means it's at top dead center. So now we put this cam sprocket on, although I've got it on the wrong place at the moment. These holes here, you want them all the way to the left, so I need to shift it over one tooth, which I'm going to do now. Alrighty, so we're going to leave it there for the night, guys. I am knackered. Been a massive weekend. Uh, but the engine's done. It's built. It rotates by itself, which is great. Now, fingers crossed that it actually works, but I've got confidence that it will. Everything seems to be great. We did everything right. Our piece studs. Oof, I just cannot wait to have a reliable engine package. So uh, next up in the same video uh, Tomorrow we're gonna finish the engine and put it in so I'll see you guys in the morning. It's gonna be one long video You peace Woo! Alrighty time to get into the money side of this build Finish putting all the random stuff onto the engine like the power steering pump alternator pump turbo manifold intake manifold the loom then we're gonna put the gearbox on it and hopefully put it in the hole, hopefully in this video. Depends how much I can get done right now. So let's get cracking. Let's put everything on this engine that we can and get it in the freaking hole. I just want to get it started. Look at it though, it's so clean. It's my new engine. It's so nice. It's nicer than any engine I've ever put in the car. That's cool, that's rad. Oof. All right, cool, shut up, let's do it. While we're here putting the intake manifold back onto the engine, I thought I'd just update you guys. Uh, from when I did the M50 manifold swap, it turns out I did one thing wrong, and that is uh, where the throttle body meets the actual intake manifold, they both have this like rubber seal ring. Usually it's like this would have the rubber seal ring, and then the M52 manifold has like the flat plate that that meets up with. But the M50 has the M50 manifold has that rubber seal ring, and so does this. And so when they both meet up, it doesn't seal properly. And it's a leaks boost, and mine actually looks like it was leaking a little bit of boost, so good to know. So Kaz Engineering, who did the knuckles in our car, has kindly sent me out this wee plate. It's pretty nifty. Uh, that bolt that goes in between, 
and that makes the rubber seal properly on both sides. So um, shout out to Kaz Engineering once again for saving the day. So yeah, I'm gonna tuck this back on and then no more, no more boost leaks, which is always handy. Woo! All right, it's another day. The sun's come up again. I got a bit caught up last night. Didn't end up putting the engine in the hole. Dan's here this morning to give me a hand. The engine is literally ready to go. Loom's cable tied up, so it's not in our way. We've got the uh, straps hooked up to the engine so we, we can lift it up. So now we're gonna take it off the engine stand, put the clutch and the uh, flywheel onto the engine, then put the gearbox on and literally just drop it in. It's a very simple process. Alrighty, so fast forward a little bit and I've gotten it to the point where we can pretty much start it for the first time. I am insanely nervous to say the least. Uh, but we've filled it up with oil, some Penrite, just the best stuff that I could buy. They need 6.5 litres of oil in an M50 or M52. I like to put 7 in uh, because we're drifting. Got sideways inertia so the oil's kind of moving around. It's always good to put a little bit extra in. So I've turned it over off camera, primed it up, primed the oil up so it's literally ready to push the start button now. I've not started it, I do not know what's going to happen so fingers freaking crossed. Alrighty, here we go. Alright, oh man. Three. Two, one. Woo! Oh yes, that is epic no weird sounds obviously it's super loud because i do not have the dump pipe on it's literally straight off the back of the turbo at the moment but it's making all the right noises oh my god that's so good first ever engine build started obviously i haven't got it up to temperature yet so i can't get too excited but that's freaking epic honestly there's no more nervous feeling than before you push that start button freaking out but uh it works so now i'm gonna go ahead obviously finish it Get it on the ground, I just need to hook the drive shaft up, put the exhaust back on, get it on the ground, put the radiator back in so I can run it up to temperature. Oh, I'm so pumped. That's rad. You. Alright, so I've gone ahead and chucked everything back together. Front ends on, front mount, radiator. Everything is good to go. So we're going to chuck some water in it and run it up to temperature. Just double check that everything is all good. Good. So everything's running great. Temps look good. She's up to temp. Hell yeah guys. So good. Very stoked. So that's it. Our 3 litre stroker turbo build is finished. It's all built. Uh, obviously, I need to go through and tidy everything up, and yeah, basically the next step is to take it to the dyno, which I'm very psyched about. Obviously, that's going to be another nervous time, uh, but it runs amazing. It sounds so fresh. You can feel that it's a new engine, uh, which is awesome. Ten days ago, this thing was M52 V25 with a leaky head gasket, uh, and now, in ten days, we've built an M50 B30 stroker engine with a turbo on the side, all back in the engine bay, up and running, and good to go. I think that's a pretty awesome feat. Of course, I know that some of you guys have said I should have checked my ring gaps before I put the rings on the pistons and put them in the car. I said it's a mistake of mine. Again, I've never built an engine before. This is the first time, 
So thank you for pointing that out. Obviously, I didn't go ahead and rip the whole thing apart and check the gaps. I've taken my chances. Seems to be running really well. It's up to 10. Uh, but if you are going to build an engine, make sure you check your ring gaps because I didn't. Also, just quickly, I'm going to have some of these t-shirts you can see on the screen right now for sale at the Mount Gambier event in about a week and a half's time. If you guys are coming down, make sure you come say hey. Grab a t-shirt. It's the first merch for the channel. The website will be up and running soon. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video where we dine out this beast. Peace.